guys, did you guys pick up? Uh, oh my god. Dude just started coming out of the woodwork. Yeah, it was a little hectic. Not the guys on the ground couldn't give us a straight up number on how many patients and what kind they were. When you get on the ground, pretty much everything changes from what our I mean, we had a plan going in and that thing just went to pretty much. It's usually they're pretty well packaged by the time we get there, and this guy, his wounds were not easy to pack or, or stop the bleeds on, so I had my hands full pretty much the whole the whole flight. We had good comms, but our intel was bad. So we thought initially that we were going to be picking up two urgents. Um, turned out to be one KIA. Uh, immediately just checked a pulse on him. Didn't get anything. No signs of life, life which is pretty bad. Uh, then we started procedures for putting him in a body bag. So, I mean, that's all you can do in those situations. We didn't really, we, I mean, we didn't have a chance to do anything for him, which is kind of the worst, worst thing you can have because you come here to help people and then all you do is transport a body. You got some blood on your head, dude. My head? Yeah. Dab that up. Well, good job. There you go. Yeah, Lane said that uh, you guys actually stopped bleeding, so. Yeah. Oh, damn, you got a good amount of blood on you. Dude, I was kid, man. It was heinous. That was probably the worst one for me just because when we have a KIA, it, as in like American forces, like we do the flag, we do our rituals, we give like all this respect. And then in that situation, we don't really do anything. We don't show any signs of respect. There's nothing I could have done. There's, it's just, I can't, I couldn't help. I couldn't do anything. When there's war, there's death. So it's kind of, Better, better truth of it, so, yeah. You're gonna be surprised, dude. Before shift, Chris and Lucas get some well-deserved downtime and head to the Kandahar boardwalk. Oh my God. Not expecting this. Exactly, I told you. It literally feels like Santa Cruz boardwalk. <laughs> Except there's no ocean or hot chicks. Yeah. One strawberry shake and one Oreo shake. Deliciousness. At my family reunion, like, the whole time I was like, yeah, I'm in training, doing a lot of this stuff. Yeah, I'll work off the helicopters, but I never really brought up, like, what we actually do because I didn't want to make them worry by any means. Yeah. So. My, my family is all, I mean, I don't have, have much family, but what I do is they're all about it. My family's funny. They, they feel, it just feels like they weren't, they're, they weren't the least bit surprised when I decided to do this. I remember first getting here, hey, I'm going outside the wire for the first time. You know, anything could happen. Oh my gosh, that's not really that big of a deal anymore. I just keep wanting to go do more and more. I want to get on the ground more and I want to do something above and beyond, you know, what we're doing right now. We have been kind of seeing some more IED activity. Unfortunately, we've seen IED blast injuries for just regular civilians that we've picked up. In the talk, intel analysts are tracking a massive uptick in IED strikes. It's no secret the IEDs are the, the biggest threat no. to any, any force out here. So, uh, we should be seeing some uh, action coming up pretty soon here. 